thank you, Judy, for honoring our invite. Judy is um, a stipendium Hungary comes scholar, uh, and she'll be speaking to us about her experience applying for this and, you know, what you need to look out for when you're applying for uh, scholarships uh, there. So maybe my first question, Judy, will, would be, did you apply for other scholarships, particularly in Europe, uh, before, like, the Hungarian, Hungarian one? Uh, or did you like apply for others simultaneously and then got this one and chose this one? Well, that's an interesting question. Thank you Ruth, for having me. Um, well, I didn't apply to any other scholarship. This was the oh, wow. very first scholarship that I applied for and I okay. got it. And I always like to joke around that I didn't choose my master's, master's <laughs> chose me. Of course, <laughs> over time, our relationship has evolved. I yeah. think our status now is that we have chosen, chosen each other. Each other. But ah. at, the beginning, at the beginning, I did choose it. Yes. So it was our first attempt and I got in. Oh, that's, I mean, congratulations. Well done. I mean, it's it's very few people that get in uh, on the first attempt. But when you say it didn't, you it chose you what do you mean by that is it that you didn't want to do the masters or it's just that the scholarship was available or what does that mean well so i knew that at one point i would do my masters but yes. at the time doing my masters was not a priority mm. although i had wanted to transition into data science and i felt like school was the easiest option at the time mm. Mm. yes makes sense makes sense so oh okay that's that's great that's good to know so guys uh yeah i think the, these are stories that we need to highlight more that you know sometimes it just takes one step that one a decision that you make okay let me try and things might work out so yeah um speak to us about how you learned about the scholarship and and uh and the application process okay so um it's pretty interesting because Kenyans, we always have that common iconic photo that we always mm. take anytime you leave the country in yeah. the airport with your kid and your suitcases just to let people know that you're outbound. So a yeah. very good friend of mine had posted one of such and mm. the nosy me went to his inbox to just inquire what the trip was all about. So that's where I found out about the Pendian Hungary Camp program. And uh, yes, so he interpreted my nosy self or my curiosity for interest. And during mm. the next call for application, <laughs> he forwarded the link to me and I applied for the scholarship. So um, the let me just highlight or rather just yeah. share what the Benda yeah. Hungary Camp is all about. Yeah. So yeah. it's a scholarship program by the Hungarian government based on bilateral agre agreements between the Hungarian government yeah. and governments of the sending countries. So currently it's available in over 90 countries and okay. it covers all degree levels. Is um, this African countries or just countries across the globe? Across the globe. Yeah. Okay. In like I think five continents so far. Okay. Okay. Yes. So it covers all degree levels, covers two short fee, um, accommodation contribution, medical yeah. insurance, as well as some stipend. Okay. Yes. Right. All right. So what was the application process like? Is it like it's a website and then you just apply, mm -hmm. like you follow the steps and you apply, or is there something specific that is I mean, you said you only applied to this one, so probably you wouldn't have a different experience. But uh, is this just one website and you sort of like follow the steps or what's the application process like? Okay, so there are two parts of the application process. One mm -hmm. is in the Stipendium Hungary Cam website. Mm -hmm. So you apply for schools there and uh, you submit your documents there, after which mm -hmm. you're supposed to download your application, um, your application form. And mm -hmm. together with other documents, you submit them physically to the Ministry of Education. Um, in Kenya or? In Kenya, exactly. Okay. Yeah, in Kenya. So you do mm -hmm. the application online to the mm -hmm. um, Tempest Foundation, which is in charge of the scholarship here in Hungary. Yeah. But also yeah. physically, you have to submit your documents at the Ministry of Education's office. After yeah. that, you are invited for the first stage, which is like yeah. an interview with the Ministry of Education. This is usually physical. Um, after that, there's a nomination and your details are forwarded to the Hungarian um, government that is in charge. 
And then after that, they will follow it up with the institutions and you'll be invited for the institutional admission interviews. Um, and then after that, you will be nominated for the award of the scholarship. Yeah, so it's that pretty seems... much straightforward. Okay, yeah, <laughs> but it seems like a very long process. Do you know how, how long it takes, um, you know, in terms of days, weeks, months? Well, the scholarship application window is usually between November to January, but yeah. between like you applying and getting yeah. the results is, yeah. so the results, the outcome of the results come in around June. And mm -hmm. I, I'd say each and every month between November and June, there's always something happening, either an interview or get so getting results. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. always something happening. Right. Thank you so much. And if you are unaware of what's happening right now, we are speaking to Judy, uh, who's an electrical and telecommunication engineering graduate student from M uh, Mount, I was about to say Mount Kenya, <laughs> Multimedia University of Kenya. And she's currently doing a data science uh, master's uh, in Budapest, Hungary. So uh, Judy, um, I know you've spoken to us about the application process. Was there any part of it that was challenging to you and how did you tackle it? Um, well, for me, the most challenging part had to be in the institutional interview, uh, admission interview, yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly because I was, like I said, I was transitioning from the electrical and telecommunication um, yeah, side yeah, yeah. to data science yeah and because this is a department in computer science so i was being tested on my programming skills and math mm. so at the time i was practicing as a network engineer and i was completely out of touch with my programming skills yeah yeah so that was a challenge for me yeah, um yeah. yeah but i had to get like a refresher course to just that to, to yeah to oh okay great so it's i I'm, I'm glad to hear it's just the technical aspect which you can work on and it's nothing to do with the scholarship application so yeah that's good um so what do you think uh your app like you ensured your application to stand out among like all other candidates is there something you did different is there something that you included that you think might have potentially increased your chances I see. Uh, well, I think there were two things that actually made me stand out. One mm. was my academic papers. Okay. I'm not bragging on anything, but I think they are yeah. beautiful, and probably that's one of the you know the we reasons why I that. probably yeah. stood out. Yeah. And the second one was in my motivational letter. So mm -hmm. I showcased genuine interest, um, personalized it as much as I could and had it, um, I shared it with a couple of people to go through it and share yeah. a few insights on what they thought about it. Okay. So those two for me. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Right, so if you have a question for Judy, uh, you can raise your hand and then I'll ask you to unmute or you can type it in the chat um, about anything relating to application for the Hungary Cam uh, scholarship. Um, so Judy, now that you've been in Europe, what would be your, you know, top three advice? Or, okay, let, let's not say top three. What would be your advice for students that are seeking, you know, scholarships to study, particularly in Hungary where you are? Okay, so um, I'll I'll share an advice that mm -hmm. um, based on experience because it worked for me and I've seen it yeah. work. Yeah. Um. So just prepare preparing accordingly by probably yeah. having someone who has walked the journey before hold your hand yeah. and guide you through it. So yeah. luckily for me, I knew someone who had walked exactly yeah. the same journey as I had. Yeah. And uh, he helped give me insights into what I would expect from the interviews mm. and the application process. Mm -hmm. That helped. And I know for a fact that it works because the following year I was also able to hold someone's hand and mm. safe to say that they also got into the program. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So if if you don't know someone personally, I think yeah. you can always know someone who knows someone. But yeah. if again that doesn't apply for you, LinkedIn is a very nice platform to connect with people and just um, have them guide you through. And I totally agree, absolutely, um, with that. Uh, so yeah, thank you for sharing that. And do you think they're like 
I mean, you wouldn't, I mean, you applied for one scholarship, so probably <laughs> might not relate, but I was going to ask you whether you think, like, from your experience, you know, being helped and helping others, uh, whether there are some co common mistakes that people tend to make and that they should avoid when applying for scholarships. Um, so one of the common mistakes that I think people make, this applied mm -hmm. to me, of course, not in this particular yeah. application, but in my previous uh, applications, yeah. uh, in my previous level, academic levels. Yeah. 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 So one will be to in, probably be intimidated by um, good yeah. schools because yeah. you think that they are competitive and you will not stand a chance. Yeah. Uh, so you will probably not get admitted and this might subsequently affect your scholarship mm -hmm. award. Yeah. So I, for me, I'm a believer in um, go for it. Do not be the first person to discount yourself. You know, yeah. if you want a good school, go for it, put your best foot forward and do your due diligence. What's meant for you will find you. Okay, I love that. I love that. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Judy. So I'm going to ask you about your experience studying in, 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 in uh, Hungary. You know, as uh, I don't know whether, you know, previously you had traveled to Europe before or, you know, uh, but how how did you face the, you know, the kind of transition life? I, I think a lot of people are usually, when th when they're thinking about applying for graduate school and they're thinking about uh, going abroad, you know, there are these challenges that they are told or whatever uh, that they should anticipate. And maybe some of them are like, mm, I cannot deal with this. So maybe can you share your, uh, your experience transitioning to life and studies in Hungary? Uh, were there any challenges that you faced? How did you overcome that? Okay, yes, for sure, challenges are there that I experienced, but there's also the beautiful side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, this was actually my first time in Europe. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was bound to experience a couple of challenges, one being the climate. Mm -hmm. um, so shortly after I came, we transitioned into winter, and that, I wouldn't say it caught me off guard, but yeah. it really did catch me off guard. I didn't <laughs> expect that it could get as cold as that. Yeah. I have not navigated or rather I haven't found a way to cope with that. Mm -hmm. I am actually dreading the next winter. <laughs> uh, but I think it helps yeah. that the um, everywhere is heated and just dressing appropriately for the weather. Um, yeah. The other challenge that I experienced was language barrier. So yeah. the language, the official language in Hungary is Hungarian, and mm -hmm. most people are not are not English speakers, and that was really really a challenge, especially outside school. Mm -hmm. uh, the program, this particular program, Stipendium Hungary Can Program, one of the requirements mm -hmm. is that you must take and pass Hungarian as a subject mm -hmm. during your first year. So mm -hmm. that really really helped because. After that first year, I am now able to at least engage people, basic conversations, I'm able to make them. So with time, it became easier. Uh, yeah. The other challenge I had was, remember, I was transitioning into a new field. Yeah. And um, yeah, I got, I found myself in class with people who have been in this field for, you know, since they're, they're in bachelor. And that can really mess up your psyche, especially if you're used to performing really well and being on top of your class. Yeah, yeah. but I think I just learned to extend more grace to myself yeah. and uh, yeah. learning that I can only compare myself to my previous version yeah. Yeah. as opposed to comparing myself with others. So um, over time, I have caught up with people and I am trusting the process. Oh, wow. I'm glad to hear that. And thank you for sharing this with us. I mean, it might be hard for, for other people, but thank you for sharing it with us. I know people can learn from this and you know how to also deal with it. So, uh, Judy, how long is the master's uh, 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 program in, uh, in, in Hungary? OK, so ideally it's meant to take two years. Yeah. Um, other institutions take two years and even yeah. in my institution is supposed to be taking two years, but for the computer science department, yeah, um, I don't know if it apply. I don't know what criteria they use, but yeah. for Kenyans particularly, we are always given a foundation year. So you have to take a foundation year, which yeah. totals it up to three years. Three years of yes. masters. Yeah. Is that because yeah. you need to like learn the language first, or just top up? 
well, I don't think that's the case. For other okay. uh, courses, even in yeah. my institution, it takes two years. But I'm, oh, okay. this is specific okay. to computer science. So I'm uh, thinking okay. it's probably yeah. to catch up with their curriculum. Ah, uh, makes sense. And, and uh, the scholarship covers all the three years? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I just needed to confirm that. Right. So I have posted the link to the scholarship on the chat in case anyone is interested in this particular scholarship. And uh, I don't see any questions in the chat, so I'm, I'm assuming that I've, I have asked all your questions. <laughs> but in case you, in case you have. OK, in case you have a question, um, yeah, uh, please type it before we because we are rounding up this conversation or just raise your hand. I think that's easier. Just raise your hand and then ask uh, the question. But yeah, uh, as we're waiting for that, um, I, you've spoken to us about the challenges that you've experienced. But what are some of the highlights that you've had so far? And how many years have you done so far? Oh, this is my second year. This is your second year. OK. Yes. And 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 what are what are the highlights so far? Uh, so one of the biggest highlights is the exposure that I've gained. For me, that's mm -hmm. invaluable. Um, having to work on uh, being exposed to a collaborative environment and having to work on projects with people from a diverse cultural background, mm -hmm. um, that has really really broadened my perspective, and mm -hmm. it's invaluable for me. Mm -hmm. And how would you say that has influenced or will influence both your personal and professional sort of like ambitions? Yes, so um, like I said, my perspective has really broadened, so yes, I no longer yes. limit my um, self in contributing only on a local context, but yeah. I can see how my skills and my efforts can have a meaningful impact to the on a global scale. No global scale, yeah, I love that. Right, so Michael is asking whether the scholarship has PhD, uh, wait, whether they offer PhD scholarships. Yes, they? yes, yes, I mentioned it covers all degree levels, all the way from bachelor's, master's to PhD. Yeah, thank you. And then Shelly is asking your advice to, I don't know what SB means, but does this, to anyone who wants to pursue data science, data science? What's your yeah. advice? Go for it. First of <laughs> all, I think it helps if you know why you want to pursue data science. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I loved that data is everywhere and I could be able to work. Well, let me just mention that yeah. um, originally I wanted to be a doctor, right? Okay. So okay. I love that I can still be able to be part of the change in the healthcare sector yeah. as a data yeah. scientist. So I can literally apply data science to any field. And that was the most amazing thing about um, studying data science. And I totally yeah. agree with you uh, on that as well, because I, I sort of like did the same journey. Um, right. Thank you, Judy, for sharing that with us. Do we have, I don't think there's any other question on the chat and I don't see any hands raised. So I'm assuming that we are all good um, and maybe just giving you an opportunity to give like a closing remark um, on anything that you feel, you know, should be touched regarding this scholarship or even just living in Hungary that we probably haven't spoken about. Okay, first I'd like to thank you for having me. Um, I'd like to wish everyone um, applying for whether it's a st the Stipendium Hungarian program or a different scholarship, all the best. If you're particularly interested in this program, I'm always willing to help. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm willing to work with you through the journey. Yes. Yeah. And speaking about LinkedIn, I'm just going to paste your. But I think if you search Judy, okay, I found it. I'm gonna paste your LinkedIn. Uh, thank you. Great. Uh, all right. So thank you everyone for joining this call. And thank you so much, Judy, for sharing your experience with us. Anyone is interested in this particular scholarship, uh, Judy is, you know, uh, she's offered to assist. So feel free to reach out to her on LinkedIn. So with that, I'm going to call it a day, night, <laughs> afternoon, based on where you are. And thank you all for joining. See you on the next My Science Journey webinar.